What's up everyone, I'm back again, doing another Twitch stream recap for YouTube, it's for all you people out there who love this stuff. So, this is another album in my uh, nine styles of metal little series I did, redrawing classic album covers. So this time we're doing uh, an awesome thrash uh, album from the band Testament, one of the Bay Area thrash guys that, uh, you know, not quite in the big four, but definitely up there, up there with uh, bands like Exodus and stuff. So this was their first album, The Legacy, uh, awesome album, Over the Wall is an awesome track. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty damn good start to finish, really. You can't really, really fault it. So you can see I've started sketching it up. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward looking album cover. That's why I thought it'd be an interesting one to redraw, put a little bit more of a spin on it. Um, but what I'll do is get into some info and stuff to start up, and then we'll talk about the drawing as I do it along. So, as I said, this is the Testament album called The Legacy. It's their debut album. Uh, and a little bit of trivia here is actually the band was called Legacy originally. Uh, when they were called The Legacy, uh, Steve uh, Souza, I think it was Zetro, he, uh, he was the original singer. And then he left to go be in Exodus after they kicked out Paul Bailoff. So that sort of left a hole for the vocals and then they got Chuck Billy in who was in a band called Guilt who played alongside the Leg uh, yeah, Legacy, no called Legacy. Uh, and then they later found out that there was a jazz band who had already trademarked the name Legacy for a band. So then they called it Testament, which was actually suggested by Billy Milano, who was from Stormtrooth of Death. So, yeah, that's a little bit interesting stuff going on there. <laughs> a little interesting connection with, um, you know, Exodus Band, who are another massive band, uh, Bay Area Thrash guys who are sick. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys you know, all play together, all friends and stuff. Gary Holt ended up filling in for guitar for Jeff Hanneman after he passed away in Slayer. Um, great saw them a bunch of times um yeah, it's a debut album it's it was really highly regarded still is um it reviewed really well a lot of people really liked it and all that kind of stuff it was actually recorded in a studio called pyramid sound in ithaca new york on the other side of the country so all these guys are bay area san francisco all that kind of stuff like the thrash scene uh you know except for bands like anthrax who are from new york um but the Pyramid Sound Studio uh, was uh, owned and run by Alex Perialis. Uh, I looked them up and they'd just done everything. Uh, Alex had worked on so many of those thrash albums. So they all have a kind of a similar-ish sound and it's probably likely because of the Pyramid Sound kind of legacy, if you will, that it was created by having stuff mixed and mastered by Eric Perialis at Pyramid Sound. So that's a, that's a pretty cool bit of, uh, bit of trivia there. It's, um, yeah, like I said, it, it's, it's a really popular album. Um, did pretty good for a debut album. I mean, what can you say coming out the gate with songs like Over the Wall and stuff, which are, you can play it now and still kicks ass. So you're yeah, getting back onto the drawing stuff. So you can see I've, I've sort of pumped out the sketch um, and then I'm kind of getting into inking now. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this album uh, is because it, it's an interesting composition. You know, because of the whole thrash logo thing, a lot of it's kind of symmetrical. So I tried really not to do too many symmetrical looking albums in the same kind of setting, a series of stuff. But this is a great little symmetrical one. Um, you know, the other thing I try to do is mix it up. You know, some albums have figures, some albums have sort of landscapes and stuff, whereas this is sort of more, it's, it's more ob objective. You know, it's got the, the arch window, which sort of flattens it off, and then you've got the skull with the little dragon on top. Uh, so it, it's a different kind of vibe, a different kind of composition. So I, I actually um, changed the dragon a fair bit to make it a bit more animated because it's, it's quite um, like kind of plain or kind of static I guess uh, so I wanted to sort of draw have a bit more of a of, of its composition of its body kind of in mind so it's sort of snaking around the top of the head I changed the, the head of the dragon 
you know, I put a bit more effort into the horns on the on the skull and the teeth and stuff like that to make it a bit more gnarly, have a bit more of a presence because it, it sort of it looks like it was a a sculpture that was like photographed and in doing that you know if it's not like a 3d model or something you don't really get to light it exactly how you want so if things fall into shadow you kind of lose detail and stuff um so yeah you know doing a uh, good old goat horns and stuff it, it's nice to have the the ridges kind of follow the contour of that of the horns i think i made them stick up so they're a bit more like horns as opposed to just sort of like cones sticking off the top of the skull again just because i wanted to make it a bit more natural have a bit more of a, a realistic kind of feel and because uh the whole series you know really just working with like a handful of colors the the underlying drawing like the sort of the draftsmanship needed to be quite strong because i couldn't hide it by putting lots of effects or colors and stuff in there so it was important really to uh you can see my little bg background note there to make sure i knew that was the background um <clears throat> important to get the the drawing really solid really right um you know you can see i've put in the sort of the bricks of the arch window castle window kind of thing and now i'm going through with sort of a more of a, a scratchy paintbrush to really utilize the texture of that brush to make it seem more like weathered stone. You can see that um, the actual inked lines are a bit stronger, a bit sort of flatter, and then now there's a, another layer working with the texture. And it's something that I'm trying to do a bit more. It's, it's something I would recommend people do as well if, if you're doing your own art, is to really think about what it is that you're drawing and or painting and what's the best tool to get across that feeling of like how do i describe this visually as stone as opposed to something that was really smooth like metal or like a tree with a sort of gnarly um, bark and branches and stuff so it's like i'll use a, a, a fatter scratchier brush to really try and get that uh, stone you know lots of little texture rough kind of feel I'm onto the sort of color palettes and stuff now. So, you know, throughout the series, I've been doing black and white, red, and then two different types of gray. So that kind of afforded me a little bit of room to move when I'm thinking about lighting stuff. Um, you know, the red is obviously an accent color. So you kind of want to use it sparingly, you don't use it across the whole thing. Um, you know, the color palettes of the albums that I'm working from are very different a lot of the time. So I can't just sort of use it, the red interchangeably with one specific color. So on the album, if it's yellow, I'm like, oh, I'll use red here. But not every album has yellow in it. You can see later on some of the, the sort of like the, the black metal ones, it's, uh, it's just black and white. So I have to kind of work that out on my own. Um, so yeah, using white, uh, that I'm doing now sort of towards the end of the of the process to really kind of work out how to balance out what I'm showing you know what the what the lighting is doing where the light source is coming from um, and to kind of do justice to the original album cover so again I couldn't just really use it you know sort of replacement one for one so I kind of had to think about what are the main parts of the album which bits that I want to kind of accentuate and then also how do you want to describe the form of the lighting uh, and it, you know sometimes you got to cheat as well because in this scenario really I, I think I'm sort of doing the light coming from above but then the light is also coming from behind almost so it's illuminating the inside of the, the that window for those sort of square stones that make up the wall the castle wall kind of vibe um so it's sort of you, you know it's kind of fudging it a bit um you know i've sort of done this for most of the other ones i bring in the actual logo uh to make sure that i can sort of get it right and just sort of roughly trace it it, it would just take way too long to try and draw it but looking at the logo and drawing it on another page 
um, you know you can do it, it takes time sometimes if you want to use a grid system if, if the, you're drawing something that's really difficult to draw and has a lot of detail um, but then something like this it's like it's a logo it, it's got to be what it is um, I realized as well that the the shading the kind of like um, the shadowy the gradients and stuff in the in the logo in the original art I couldn't really leave it out so I ended up having to to go in and really and do it pretty faithfully to the logo I think I was actually just looking at it on another screen at this point I wasn't yeah you can see I'm looking across um, because I didn't want to trace that either I, I, if there was room to make it a little bit messy a little bit more expression um, that's that's where it is because I got the foundation the framework of the logo sitting there already it's a sort of almost like the opposite um, to what you'd normally do that it's outlined in white and then you have shadows underneath that um, yeah that's that's sort of the way it, it works for the actual logo on the on the real album um, here we go putting the, the album title in there side note it's, it's an interesting choice of font really when you think about it the legacy compared to the testament logo which is sharp and evil kind of very thrash symmetrical logo and then the legacy is a, like a collegiate college style font i'm not sure if it goes you know i'd probably use a, a serif font to sort of tie in with the that kind of like gothic evil kind of vibe but uh you know what do i know <laughs> I'm just copying it. Pretty much done now. Really just going through and just tightening up. Adding these little highlights on the edges of the, the stone blocks just helps bring that out to really sell that kind of fact that, yeah, these are blocks and the light is coming from this way and it's just hitting that tiny little bit of the edge in between. You know, like when you put bricks together, you have the mortar in between. As you can see, they're cutting into the white on the inside of the window to, to make sure that you can see the grout and there's a indication that there's a little bit of shadow being cast. Th this part is always kind of nice to slow down in, just to sort of work out what's working. Do I need a little bit? See that underneath A, you know, it needed to, I was like trying to work out if I, I needed to have a little bit something there. So here we go, here's the final piece. It's, um, done it pretty good pretty happy with it I liked experimenting with stone different textures you know um, tweaking the skull with the horns and the little drag it was kind of fun as well to to add a little bit of my own touch to it um, you know really quickly but the the uh, the ponytail hair and stuff and the tongue worked out pretty good as well so it was good it was a nice uh, straightforward one I could sink my sharpened demon teeth into but uh Thanks again for checking it out, having a look. Uh, I've got the other ones coming as well, so um, stay tuned for that. All right, thank you. Peace.